Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline of CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Mexico City by Laura Powers. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And Laura is an author, a host, a creative entrepreneur, and a celebrity psychic. Uh, so this is the first, this is the first for uh, for sales pop. We've had a lot of interesting and diverse people on, but we have not had a psychic on before. So this is a first for us. So maybe you can just tell me what the whole interview is going to be about and we can uh, <laughs> and we don't have to do it. <laughs> um, no, what we want to talk today is about intuition because obviously. Um, you know, you are a creative entrepreneur and you do, you know, help businesses and business people. Um, intuition, gut feeling, all of that stuff. Uh, I really do believe it plays a big part in in business and in, in how we operate. Um, but we often push that aside because we think that in this era of technology and data and all of that is that it, it's that that somehow is something that, yeah shouldn't really listen to you should just focus on something that's the hard facts in front of you so maybe you could explain a little bit more about what intuition really is and how how it plays a role in in business or how you can have it play more of a role in your business absolutely so from my perspective i don't think business and intuition should be separate at all i think a lot of people do tend to think of it as being a very separate thing but if you navigate intuitively then you can have a better business which is you know we're all in business to be successful. I mean, mm -hmm. no one starts out to be like, I want to have a failing or a struggling business. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the whole point of intuition is I think to ease your path, to make you more successful, to ease your struggles, you know, and when you tap into your intuition, basically you're learning like how to do things more easily with more flow, with less struggle. So I really encourage people uh, that are business owners or, or wanting to start a business to really focus on their intuition and making sure they're tapped into that or connect with someone like me to help them with that if they're struggling in that area themselves, because it's just going to save you a lot of pain, anguish, and probably help you become more successful on a business level more quickly. So most psychics, I'll, I'll be honest, to aren't that successful in business, but I've been able to use my psychic ability specifically because I'm focusing on that to build a multiple six figure business, as well as, you know, bringing a lot of traditional metrics of success in terms of working with celebrities and, you know, doing big, big media, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a, so um, maybe let's dive in a little more right to um, number one, everybody, does everybody have intuition and latent intuition and how do they tap into it and how do they, how did they differentiate maybe between their intuition and perhaps um, just like hoping for the best? Oh my gosh. Well, I think intuition shows up in different ways. It depends on the person to how that manifests. So in my case, I'm clairvoyant, which means I see, mm -hmm. I receive information through my thoughts and feelings, but everyone is familiar with the idea of like that gut feeling. So I think that's yeah. something that everyone can access when something just doesn't sit right with you. So that's something that's really important to pay attention to. Something could appear to be like great on the surface and that could be their opportunity or maybe a particular person that you're considering working with. So it's really important to pay attention to that. So if there's ever a disconnect between how something appears in terms of logically, analytically, it should be fine. And then it just doesn't feel right. I think it's always important to pay attention to that of, of the utmost you know, our body is basically an avenue for our spirit to communicate with us. So if you're curious about how that works, I would recommend reading a book called What Every Body is Saying, meaning like body, every space mm -hmm. body. Um, that's written by a specialist who works with FBI and law enforcement, and he analyzes facial expression, body language, and it's fascinating because I read that book and a lot of people think I'm a mentalist, which means like I keenly observe and then would sure. get information beyond that, but I'm not. But when I read that book, I realized there were even things I could decode in my own body language that helped me understand what was really going on unconsciously. So that's a great book if you're just curious about, you know, how your body might communicate with you things that aren't really obvious. And, and that's an avenue of intuition. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think also, um, perhaps it's probably good for people, as you said, to sometimes look back and say, maybe they made a decision where they had that gut feeling that it wasn't right, but they went ahead with it anyway. Look back for evidence of when you go against your gut or you don't listen to your intuition. Um, 
that there's probably evidence in your past to show you that when you go against it, uh, the results aren't great. Oh yeah, it's that way, you know, things that turn out badly or not as good as you'd like when you don't listen. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, things that turn out very well when you do. So I'll give an example. When I was brand new in my business and, you know, I, I have a background in political science and government and politics. So totally outside of the realm of the psychic area. Mm -hmm. And I felt intuitively to give readings at a local coffee shop. And I'll be honest, I didn't really want to do it, but intuitively it was just a strong urge. And mm -hmm. then I put up a flyer in the window and the same day I put up the flyer, the managing editor of the local newspaper called and asked if you could write a story about me. So two days later, there was a story in the regional newspaper and it was with my photo and he described what I did and my phone started to ring. So, you know, it basically help me get clients right away as well as get media. And if you haven't explored getting media as an avenue for growing your business, I mm -hmm. highly, highly recommend it. That's something that my angels and spirit guides and my intuition guided me towards very early on. And I think that's why I've been able to grow a very uh, rapidly growing business, even when I started during the recession. So, you know, paying attention to those little things. And also sometimes, you know, the, the intuition or the hit that you get is not necessarily obvious what it's about. So in that case, it was about doing readings at a coffee shop, but it was really about media and it was really right. about growing my business. Yeah. And, and that's, that's fascinating. Uh, even, even that small story is fascinating because I do feel that people aren't as in tune with themselves or listening to themselves enough today because of all the distractions around them and all the, you know, they're filling their head and space with social media and media and all this kind of craziness, which is all designed nowadays just to, just to drive you crazy and to, you know, provoke reactions or whatever. But I feel like people have become more distracted from themselves or just dis disconnected from themselves. How, how would you advise people how to get more in tune with, as you said earlier, with what their bodies are telling them. Oh, I think you brought up a really good point, which is that it's very hard to receive messages when there's so much noise happening. So that could be social media. It could be literal. You know, you have um, no quiet time. You are always on in meetings or, you know, you always have something on your agenda. So it's really important for us to have that quiet, receptive time you know, it could be something like actively meditating, but it doesn't have to be. It could be like taking a bath or taking a walk or, or literally vacuuming, which I said, sounds funny, but those kind of house chores that don't take a lot of our mental mm -hmm. focus, it actually is when our, our mind is kind of open and receptive to receive those messages, whether that's from ourselves or from our angels and spirit guides, if you believe in that. But one way or the other, we need to be available to receive. Like we can't talk and listen at the same time in terms of intuition. So we need that receptive time. And then you can create that however it works for you. So whether that's kind of like a moving meditation, you know, walking, riding your bike, swimming, or whether you're actively meditating, it's important to have some time at least every day where we're allowing for that. Just to literally hear our own thoughts and ideas. Because a lot of our intuition will come in through our own thoughts. Yeah, and, and like I said, I think that's where, uh, unfortunately, not enough people are, are doing that. Or, or as you know, in, in business, you know, whether you're, a, you know, an entrepreneur or a salesperson, or whatever, you feel often that you have to be on all the time, you have to be active all day, you have to be doing something. And the idea of taking time out to be with your own thoughts seems so alien, uh, alien to your situation. But that's what that's what really successful people do at the end of the day. Absolutely. I think it's, it's what really successful people do. And it's because it actually helps you create success. I mean, it's not, it's not the other way around. I'll, I'll become successful and then I'll have <laughs> the time mm -hmm. to meditate. Like we all can be extremely busy. It's a, it's an importance of prioritizing. And I also want to say it doesn't have to be this monumental undertaking. Sure. I'm not saying everyone needs to meditate for an hour. Um, it could be 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes that you're taking. I think more is great, but I think even doing that is important. And I also want to share for those who struggle with meditation that it is a practice and, you know, you would never think like, okay, going to the gym is hard. So I'm just not going to do it. Like you recognize that it's going to take some time and then over time it gets easier. And just because it doesn't feel good in the moment doesn't mean that it's not beneficial. So it's important to keep that in mind. Yeah, no, it is. And again, I've been talking about the pervasive culture that we live in today. Everything is so immediate and, you know, instant gratification. And, right. that. and uh, you know, you can find something that in two seconds will transform you forever. You don't have to put any effort into it. And unfortunately, that's 
that's not the reality. And and I feel like more than ever, you, you're absolutely correct. People should be finding time and it doesn't have to be a massive undertaking. Or if they go and say something like meditation that they think is help, it, it does require some some level of a commitment. And uh, and I think that's often the the issue here is that we've become we've almost become commitment phobic uh, as a culture now because we're looking for instant gratification. So anything that requires any level of commitment, we're like, no, 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 if it's not going to give it to me immediately, I'm not interested. Yeah, I agree. And even when we do have massive shifts, like it, it appears like we've made a quantum leap or a big jump, a lot of mm-hmm. times it's because energetically we've done this work or we've prepared so that we're able to do that. So I've had some pretty massive things come in pretty dramatically. I've been featured on Will Ferrell's podcast by BuzzFeed, yeah. lots of big television. But even those things, even though from the surface, it might appear like all of a sudden it just came in. I also did a ton of work on myself to allow for that to come in. So I think it's really important. It's like the analogy I love to give is the bamboo plant. When the bamboo is growing, it starts out and it creates this like massive root structure underneath the ground. And so for like a whole year, it appears like nothing is happening from the surface, but there is stuff happening. It's just underneath. And then when it breaks the surface, it grows so fast. So I think it's important to recognize that just because we're not automatically getting things that are recognizable on the surface that are happening, that doesn't mean that there aren't big things happening underneath that then will make us grow very quickly and successfully, you know, on the outer level as well. Yeah. And, and I think that's such a great point that you make there because I do, and I, cause I do think sometimes, you know, people, we look at other people and we think, oh my goodness, look what happened to them. And we think overnight success, right? We never see behind it the fact that maybe they spent years getting to that overnight success. Uh, or right. all the trials and tribulations. And then we don't see all the other people who are just desperately keeping going and it's not happening for them yet. Uh, so I do think that's always an important thing to remember that there's there's no real such thing as overnight success. And regardless of what your goal is, uh, to get to your goal involves a lot of simple steps, right? It's continuous simple steps. It's not like you start off at A and you go to Z immediately. You've got you've to progress your way there. I think it's a combination because I think there are, it's important to take action steps, but at the same time, when you use your intuition, you may be able to go from A to Z a lot faster (laughs) than you would if you're not, because you're able to do things in the, the most natural kind of flow state way. So a lot of my media, for example, that I've booked, I I have recently hired a booking agent just because I'm so busy, but a lot of the stuff I did before, I, I didn't you know, I, it would literally be like, you should go to this party. And then you'd talk to this person and then here you are, you know, um, something like that. And so it's, I think it's a combination of both. And those who have the most success are able to follow those intuitive urges, do things that do create that fast success, but at the same time, not be afraid to put in the work and do those steps because yes, I've had some incredible intuitive opportunities that came in, but I also still made sure I have a good website. I, you know, have a reel, I, you know, I have good promo material, like, you know, so that even when those opportunities come in, I appear to be ready. It's not just like, you know, pie in the sky out of nowhere at the same time. No, absolutely. Uh, I I totally agree. And I think that's it. I mean, you, you know, you help yourself and then everything kind of falls in, will fall into a flow from that and fall into place. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, what are other, I mean, and today, uh, as I said, I mean, you know, people in business or in sales or whatever, I mean, it's been a pretty stressful time for a lot of, for a lot of people, obviously stating the obvious, uh, how, how can, how can people use intuition to kind of tap into understanding their own situation? And I mean, in terms of how they, how they are coping, maybe their mental health, the stress level, all of that. How can you, how can you use some of these gifts of listening to yourself to be able to assess how am I right now? And what do I need to do to maybe lift myself out of this? Yeah. So I think it's important to think about what are your pain points? You know, what is it that's really bringing you down and keeping you from doing those steps that are going to help you be to that next level of success? I think right now, especially with COVID and some of the challenges, it's really important for people to get help um, and not feel like they're doing everything on their own. If you haven't hired, you know, a virtual assistant or team, definitely no matter where you are, having more of a team or more support can really help you. Um, making sure you're doing things that are self-care and releasing relationships or situations that are draining you. I think that's really key. Um, I was at a point, this was a few years ago where I just felt like I was, I had hit a wall where I, I 
was doing all the things that I just wasn't seeming to get past that to that next level that I really wanted. And what came up intuitively was that I needed to release some relationships that really weren't serving me. So I think it's really important when you're trying to get another level of success to really look at the bigger picture and literally what is nurturing me, what is feeding me and what is bringing me down? Is it that I don't have support? Is it that I'm in relationships that aren't serving me? Is it that I'm not taking care of my body? I'm a big believer and advocate of of working out. Um, and mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it has to be going to the gym. It could be, you know, home yoga or taking a walk, but anything that gets your energy flowing is going to really help you with your business success as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I'm a, I'm a big believer too in, in exercise and, and finding something and find something that, that makes you happy, right? You know, don't go, don't go try an exercise that you're not going to like because you think you should do yeah. that. Like find, find something that actually you enjoy. As you said, it could just be walking. I mean, it's a highly underestimated form of, uh, <laughs> of activity. If you do some research into it, you'll see it's quite a very good form of, of exercise. Um, but Definitely. I want to come back to that point about releasing because I do think this is one of the most important things that people can do in business and in life in general is pay attention to who you surround yourself with, as you said. And again, in our pervasive culture right now, we celebrate, you know, having loads of friends, connections, likes, you know, uh, all of this. Um, And, but the reality is, uh, certainly my belief is, is that when you shrink the universe of people around you to people who, who, as you said, nurture, add energy, people who you have um, mutually beneficial relationships with or whatever, um, your, your, your power, your life grows. It's funny, you shrink it and it grows. Yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's two levels of connecting with people that there's, there's that kind of public level or kind of superficial connections, Facebook friends and whatnot. And then there's mm-hmm. our closer circle. And I think, especially as it relates to our closer circle, it's really important to make sure that are those people is it mutually yeah. beneficial? I really believe in the win-win, you know, that there doesn't have to be a losing side. So if there is a losing side, then that's something to really question and start to shift. And, and sometimes that might mean letting go of relationships yeah. or situations. And sometimes if you shift, then it can shift too. So it just depends yeah. on the circumstance. And I think it's really important to have energy boundaries. So I'm a, a pretty big public figure. Um, you know, I have videos out there with 3 million views. Every time I was mm-hmm. on a certain segment of a television show, it's 2 million people that I'm connecting with. So I've, it's something I've had to really be aware of, of having those strong boundaries. And, you know, that could be also be having gatekeepers, you know, so maybe that's by having someone else be that boundary for you. <laughs> if yeah. you don't have the means to do that yourself, but having those strong boundaries, I think is really, really important as you get into and, and want to create bigger levels of success. But basically if anything is draining you, then there's no need for that. And, and it, it doesn't have to be a person. It could also be an activity. Yeah. I remember I was at a point where I, I was kind of wearing all the hats, right? And one of the things I do, I love is podcasting and I was doing my own editing and I was the host and I was the producer and, and it was exhausting and I almost stopped podcasting. And it was at the point where I really hired help, you know, but then my first hire was a podcast editor that everything really turned around for me. So if there's a particular Mm -hmm. task that really drains you, that's something to pay attention to as well. There's no need that you have to do that task, no matter what anyone has told you. (laughs) Yeah, no. And that's, that's a great point. Actually, if you think about, uh, you know, your gut feeling and your intuition and stuff like sometimes, um, you know, where there's things that you are doing that maybe, you know, you're not very good at, you don't, you don't particularly like, they're draining you, all of those things. And and you're getting these messages over and over again, that this is not where you should be focused. Because even when you try to go and do it, even if you can do it, and you get it done, you don't feel good afterwards, you still feel rotten from it. So um, I think that's another great example there of where, you know, listening to the messages, even that task is giving you. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, do you feel you know, happy when you're doing it? Do you feel, uh, or at least neutral, you know, um, mm-hmm. there's certain tasks that, you know, I mean, no one likes to do bookkeeping or, or taxes and things. And there's a certain amount of time and energy they're required to do that. But at the same time, do you personally have to do all those things? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times it's just like, or putting in a system so that it's less painful. So it's about systems. It's about getting help and then really assessing like what feeds me, what nurtures me, and, you know, what do I need to do? And what is it that I can let go of or create a better system to handle? 
Um, and one, one last question, uh, and this just popped into my head, so it's pretty abstract. And do you think that because of the because of the pandemic and because people have been you know distanced and isolated and all of that kind of stuff do you think that perhaps uh, in some ways this has provided a great opportunity for people to maybe get in touch with them do you think people's intuition levels are maybe a little higher right now because of that and maybe this is a great time to actually try and tap into it absolutely so one of the things i do is teach psychic training classes and my involvement and that like the number of people who have uh, are participating and requesting that has gone up so much this year so yes it's a great time to go within um and even if there's some challenging things happening there's always a silver lining and there's something that we're being called to learn about understand shift from that situation so i think what we're going through right now is a massive shift in terms of humanity and yes it's important to go within and at the same time find ways to connect i mean i think we're mm -hmm. all we're used to really connecting externally you know outside you know different venues and, and in person but you still can connect you know find an online community and at the same time yes we are all being called to go within and have those deeper realizations and also to do the work. So the, this year, for example, um, was the year I finally released my book on podcasting and I've been working on that, this book for several years <laughs> and it was finally like, well, it's just time to do it. You know, just gotta, yeah. gotta make the time. <laughs> yeah. So this is great. Thank you so much, Laura, for, for joining us today. It's Laura Powers. Um, all of Laura's information will be below this video, obviously. But before we go, Laura, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Sure. So yeah, if, first of all, people want to connect with me, it's uh, healingpowers.net on the psychic side. And then to learn about podcasting and um, my sort of coaching aspect, it's powershour.biz. Uh, and I guess I'm just going to say, you know, I'm, I'm a person that's, um, you know, very creative. I, I'm a singer songwriter. I used to make my living as an actress. I worked in government and politics, you know, I'm psychic. So I do all these things and it's important pe for people to really honor all their parts too, like whatever it is that they are and be authentic. And a lot of times the things that make us weird or unusual are actually our strength. So just, just mm -hmm. to keep that in mind and for people not to feel like they have to hide a part of themselves or to compartmentalize in order to be successful. And one thing leads to another. So for example, I used to be a living, I did improv for years. And then when I got the offer to be on Will Ferrell's podcast, which I didn't pitch, by the way, they just, they just asked me to be on mm -hmm. the show. It's a comedy podcast, but I've done comedy. I've improv. So I was able to do it. So there are always going to be opportunities, no matter how strange that really fit with like all the different aspects of you that you, that are there and all of your different you know, talents and abilities. Yeah, no, that's great. And that's why I think it's always, uh, it's always great advice for people is to consider every opportunity, like don't just like dismiss things out of hand, but, but examine every opportunity, because as you say, you don't know how well and how good an opportunity or how good a fit it may be when you pull back the layers a little bit, uh, because sometimes we're too quick to just say no to things that seem a little bit out of left field. <laughs> totally. And again, following your intuition can help you figure out whether, you know, is this going to be helpful or is this just like yeah. <laughs> going to be the other way? <laughs> exactly. All right. Listen, thanks, Laura, for joining us today all the way from Mexico City. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And I will see all of you for another interview really soon. Thank you.